All right, g'day. Welcome, IB Psychologist, to another video tutorial. Uh, in this one, we're going to look at paper three. Just a quick review, just like I did for paper one and two, a brief introduction into what is in the exam. So just a reminder, paper three, this is for high level students only. So if you're a standard level student, you can turn this off, have a break. You don't have to worry about paper three. Um, high level students, you're going to have one hour for paper three, five questions, and it's about research methods. Um, and so you've got, again, five questions. So quantitative or qualitative methods uh, are going to be the basis. And it's about research methods. You will have some questions on ethics uh, and evaluation there as well. So this is a cover of a paper three. And then here we have, this is what um, the reverse side of it looks like. So the stimulus is an unseen study. Now this is how paper three differs from one and two. You, you don't have to remember and revise the studies. You're given a summary of a study and that's what you base your answers on. That's the stimulus material, right? Because it's stimulating your answers to the five questions down here. Um, now paper three is, uh, it should be straightforward to prepare for. Okay, because you know exactly what the questions might be. They're static questions. They're not going to change from year to year, right? Even the, the exact phrasing will appear. Uh, and we're going to look uh, in this video exactly what those questions are. So the, where the difficulty might lie in paper three is that you don't know what this study is going to be about. This study won't be something that you're familiar with. It won't be something from your course, right? You would have never seen it before. And so you have to apply your knowledge to this unseen study. Okay, but it's much easier than it sounds. Okay, so if we look at question one, question one is actually three separate questions, right? Uh, question A, B, and C. So the first one is um, about the research method. Now, it's important to note all three of these questions are going to appear. So exactly as you see them on the screen, that they're going to be your th first three questions in the exam. So it's really important that you know exactly how to answer these three questions. And I'll make separate videos uh, that goes into more detail with um, each individual question and how to answer it and what to do. Uh, and so, you know, hit subscribe, you'll, you'll get a notification when um, that appears. So the first question is about the research method, then about the sampling, and the third about the additional research method. Okay, so um, again, it's important that it, it, this should be pretty straightforward to answer. For example, the first one, identify the research method. Well, you just state, okay, what was the method they used? And then two characteristics with a little bit of application. Uh, again, I'll, I'll, go, I'll make more videos for each of these um, coming up shortly. All right, so question one, all three of these questions appear. Question two is a little different. This is about ethical considerations. And we have two static questions here. However, only one of these is going to appear. Okay, so you're not going to have two ethics questions. You'll have just one, okay? One of the following questions. Now, it's important to note, you don't get to choose which one, right? It's not like the essays where both appear and you choose which one. Uh, uh, uh. No, you have to, they'll just choose and only one will appear. Okay, um... <clears throat> Now, this first question is quite straightforward. Okay, pretty easy to answer this one. How were the ethical considerations applied? We're talking about things like informed consent, getting approval, debriefing, etc. Um, and then could they could they uh, apply further considerations? And then the second one here, this is actually quite tricky about the ethics and reporting the results and applying the findings. My hunch is that this first question is going to appear much more frequently in the exams than this one. However, you have to be equally prepared to answer both. Quick time for a little plug, um, revision book available in the description. Um, a lot of people, including teachers, are, are unsure how to answer the second question. Uh, I've, I've tried my hardest to make it really clear in this book and in the student's guide as well, actually, the other textbook, and how you can answer these questions. Um, <clears throat> so you'll feel confident going into your uh, exams. Okay, so that's question two with the ethics. One last thing, again, I'll make separate videos, but uh, there are six marks, you get one point per relevant mark, so you have to make six, six total points, okay? And there are two parts to each question, so three parts, uh, three points for each part of the question. Again, I'll explain it more later. Question three, evaluation. Uh, so just like ethics, only one of these questions will appear from this choice of three, um, and, and we don't know which one, but we'll know it, it'll look exactly like it appears on the screen here. Okay, so we've got generalizability, um, reducing, uh, sorry, ensuring uh, credibility and avoiding bias. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of overlap between these concepts and actually we can use the same terms and concepts um, for, for all of them. And I'll give you just one quick example, triangulation. Okay, if we triangulate, we're gonna uh, we can help our credibility. We're also gonna reduce the chances of bias, and it might help us um, generalize our findings. Okay, again, all explained in here. 
Okay, um, so this is worth nine marks. So we can see the total here, we've got uh, nine for question one, all three questions, six and nine. What does that make? 24. 24 total marks for question three. You know exactly what the questions are going to be. Um, the, the only tricky thing is you won't know what the study is going to be. But hopefully it's pretty easy to see how you can prepare for uh, paper three. Now, here's here are some tips that I would give you. I would use flashcards um, to memorize key terms, and I'm in the process of making some flashcards uh, as well. So if, if, if you subscribe to our blog and everything, you'll get the notifications. But um, the I think just, for example, question one, you have to give the two characteristics of a research method. If it's a true experiment, and you can't define a true experiment and give two characteristics, then you can't get three marks. So I would, have, I would make flashcards, uh, and I'm gonna make flashcards for you all, where on the front you just have true experiment, and on the reverse it's just got two characteristics, okay? Pretty straightforward. Um, all that's in the textbooks as well. Second thing, um, practice, practice, practice. Okay, I would get a, get your hands on as many past papers as you can. I posted some on the blog. Um, I've got a, um, a teacher support pack for qualitative research methods. If your teacher has that, that's got, uh, I think, three or four, maybe even five um, practice papers. Um, uh, yeah, so as much as possible, try and find um, some practice papers. Don't revise studies. Okay, because you know you're not going to see the study. So revise the terms and concepts and learn the terms and concepts. Okay, but don't worry about um, revising the studies. However, what you can do is you can use studies from your course as practice for paper three. So for example, if you've been studying HM, then you know you could um, you could find a summary of HM study and then use those static questions to apply that to his. So, okay, what were the ethical considerations applied? Well, of course, anonymity, because that's HM. But then think, okay, what other ethical considerations are relevant? Or think about what were the ethical considerations in reporting the findings of HM's study? Um, and what about the applications? Are there ethical considerations and applications? So you can, um, you can two kill birds, kill two birds with one stone. You can revise the studies that you're using in paper one and two um, and getting to know them about their ethics and the ethical considerations while still revising about the, um, uh, for revising for paper three. Same thing goes with evaluation. Um, my students love the study, uh, the, the study by Luby. All right, the study by Luby et al. Uh, about development in the hippocampus and socioeconomic status. Now we talk about generalizability. Generalizability is a possible question in paper three, but so many of them are preparing to maybe have to evaluate that study in paper one and two, then they can talk, uh, look at the factors that influence the generalizability of Luby's study, and then they're, they're practicing how, how to explain that for paper three, but also they can make those same points in paper one and two. So I think that's a really good way that you can, um, you can really uh, do some in-depth revision um, for papers one, two, and three, all at the same time. Hope that was helpful. That's it. Um, the blog, every, all this is in the descriptions. I'm sure you've seen these videos before. You know how they work. Um, our revision guide, like I said, has just come out. There's a link to that in the description as well. Uh, and you'll be able to get a preview. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you've got any requests for videos or things you want explained about the IB Psychology course, more than happy uh, to try and make some videos. And getting lots of more requests for videos. So uh, I'm trying to, trying to keep up and trying to get them all done. Uh, just have to find the time for everything. Okay. Good luck.